recording here. So yeah, just taking some moments to settle in. Let yourself arrive. And today we're going to be um, picking back, picking up our conversation that we started last week in terms of the Dharma talk. We're going to sit first, but I'm just going to give you a, a little preview of what's coming. Um, so last week we talked about working with um, the hindrance that we call restlessness, which can also show up as worry. And, um, and today we're going to be talking about uh, how we can prevent it. So I'll unpack a little bit from last week that we I'll just do a brief summary um, of the talk and then we'll um, we'll enter into like some new terrain that we didn't have an opportunity to discuss last week. So go ahead and we're going to start with our meditation. So making yourself comfortable, finding your comfortable meditation posture. And some folks, like you can close your eyes or you can keep them open with a soft gaze. Either one works. Whichever choice you make, you just want to kind of go with that choice and not be shifting and changing things around. As we drop a little bit more deeply into meditation. There's a way to more, um, you know, become a little more embodied. You know, you can just allow yourself to soften, just sensing your skin softening. And sensing the heaviness of your bones. And sensing any tension that you might be feeling in your body, like relaxing. And just allowing in a little more ease, sensing if there's like five or 10% more ease available. You can soften your jaw and soften your eyes. Soften your skin and allow your just awareness to be tethered to your breathing. It can be helpful in the beginning to take a few deep breaths. And so let's do that together. We'll hold at the top of the inhale. So deep breath in and hold, sip in a little bit more. And exhale, we can release, even sigh it out and soften a little more. Taking a deep breath in and hold, sip in a little bit more. And release. And again, deep breath in and hold, sip in a little bit more. And let it go like letting air out of a tire. Let yourself arrive. Let yourself arrive free of the usual burdens. Free of the usual tendency that we have to fret or worry or entertain thoughts about a future that hasn't arrived. Or recapture and remember a past that we may kind of hold high in our awareness or sort of regret. And we can just like release from those burdens, the burdens of anticipation and the burden of recollection and remembering. And just sensing with 
intention and awareness that now is happening. We can choose to be here. Even more as we commit collectively to the practice of non-thinking. Non-thinking does not mean that we aren't having thoughts. Non-thinking does not mean that we are not having thoughts. Non-thinking means that I am choosing in this moment not to entertain them, right? So just like opening up awareness to include this commitment, this devotion to non-thinking. This is our time to settle and to put down the burden that comes from engaging so much in our thinking minds. And so letting the awareness be like 60 to 80% with the breath as it is. You don't have to hold anything together. You don't have to create some special feeling. Just to simply be is enough. You can open up to the sounds in the room. And the different sensations that are arising and passing away related to the felt sense of your body.
you might connect even more to just what's true for you right now in this moment. How is your heart? Maybe there's a feeling of ease or maybe there's a feeling of restlessness. Maybe there's peace or maybe there's anxiety. Maybe there's contentment or maybe there's irritation. Maybe there's something else that I haven't named that you could just include in your practice. that you can include with some friendliness. Maybe even sensing what a little more friendliness would feel like right now. If you ever get collapsed or contracted around a story, just re-relaxing and not making that a problem or somehow an error. The mind is often planning or rehearsing or remembering or rehashing or judging or complaining criticizing, comparing. The problem isn't that the mind does that. The problem is that we think it shouldn't be that way. And so just noticing how your mind operates and not making it wrong can always come back to the breath if you get lost. You can always come back to sound or just to sensations in your body. Very relaxing. And we can start to sense the oft forgotten field of goodness. So many acts of goodness and generosity happening even now. It 
coming to practice an act of goodness. Mothers tending to their children right now in various ways. Some very resourced, others not so much. And yet just sensing that goodness Sensing people doing their work in the world to varying degrees and various capacities, showing up, doing their best, offering a kind word, caring, caring about each other, caring about clients and students and patients. Just sensing the the goodness, the field of goodness. There's so much of it. We sense into this field of goodness, not to bypass the challenges that we are each experiencing at this time. But as a way to feel supported, to feel connected to remember the goodness, the capacity of the human being, of humans to be good, no matter what. We see it all the time in so many ways. You've experienced it likely already today either experienced it or been a generator of it. You don't have to hold on to it or try to create it, just sort of this natural opening to a view that's often forgotten in times of stress. That we actually need in order to navigate stressful times. All of the homes that may be decorated for the holiday. I'm moved by that. By people's desire to remember goodness, no matter what. knowing that you are held in that goodness. There's no transgression too big to be held in this kindness.
These last few minutes, just really sensing the rightness of your experience. So whatever your experience is, it's right. Maybe pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. And it belongs. You don't have to look for proof of the belonging. It's just inherent to your aliveness. Stop looking for proof. Let what I feel fill me, but not consume me. Let me follow what I feel, but not be forced. Let me become the kind of soul who never clings too hard, who lets go and yet loves. Let me imagine better worlds, yet work in this one. Let me touch and treasure even people I can never hold. And let me learn from all my losses. Let me out and let me in and let me see and let me be a window, maybe broken, but through which a bit of air and sunlight comes. You can make yourself comfortable and if your eyes are closed, blinking them open, allowing yourself to orient to your surroundings. I heard this last week and I really liked it. We rem- and we can even look behind us when we orient. So remembering orienting isn't for the mind. The mind's like, I know where I am. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> we orient for the nervous system. Yeah. Blessings. Mm. So good to sit with you and to explore, kind of wrap up our talk from last week. The a very important element um, that uh, we didn't un- unpack, and so I wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to talk about it today. Um, so, where this is sort of our part two exploration of the um, hindrance, or what I like to call the friends on the path. There's many of them. (laughs) Um, We often think of these as like obstacles to practice. And I I don't actually, um, and actually our view of these things like restlessness being an obstacle to practice 
actually can um, prohibit us from working with it in a way that um, that is fruitful and helpful. So I, I like to refer to these as as, as um, friends on the path. Though in the classic Buddhist languaging, you'll hear them referred to as hindrances. Um, so um, let's start with your aspiration, your intention. I want you to sense into that now, like what it is that would, uh, you know, you're most wanting to feel or receive. And um, you can pop it into the chat if you like, that helps me. As you're doing that, I just want to mention that these, um, these uh, Dharma talks and meditations are um, freely offered and your donations really make a difference. So you can donate to me via PayPal or Venmo or Zelle. Um, Self-acceptance. Thanks, Marlene. I also want to mention, um, just looking ahead, um, I would love it if you would join me um, and Marlene. We're going to be co-hosting a a uh, day-long retreat, virtual online retreat, um, December 5th from 11 to 5. It's called Happy for No Reason. And so um, I just want to invite you to that. I'll, we haven't, the landing page isn't totally ready yet. It'll be ready this week. And uh, But mark that in your calendar. <laughs> We're going to be exploring, um, uh, uh, in particular, metta practice. Um, otherwise known as loving kindness or friendliness practice practices that really help us like unhook from um, destructive mind states and heart states and it's you know it's good to remember that we can practice these things that like we don't have to be someone who just like is you know naturally optimistic <laughs> if that were true I would not be teaching you <laughs> anything <laughs> Um, uh, anyway, so, um, but metta is a practice of cultivation of friendliness that actually awakens the natural capacity of the heart to be joyful and, um, kind and, uh, vital and open despite circumstances and conditions. And this is true freedom. So during this day long retreat, we're going to be doing, um, alternating sitting and talking and all, it'll just It'll be a nice day long um, retreat, a nice reset. And that's happening December 5th from 11 to five. All right. So let's talk about the last aspect of restlessness and worry. Okay, let's see, Aaron, inspiration and spiritual nourishment. Beautiful. Um, Param, it's nice to see you and your kitty. I miss you. Reinvigorate my meditation practice, accept some life changes. Good. Joanne, centeredness, centeredness, Marilyn, peace of mind. Beautiful. All right. So I'm just going to remind us of what we talked about last time as a little um, uh, review. Um, let me see here. Okay. So restlessness and worry. No one's free from this experience of restlessness and worry. It's like it just happens. It's part of our natural human experience. And so the first thing that we want to do and working with it is understanding it rather than trying to bypass it or trying to get rid of it. So we, we explored that in depth last week. Um, and then we talked about um, ways that we can work with it, talking about being mindful of it, how being mindful of restlessness and worry really starts with feeling it physically. Um, how important and vital patience is when we're working with this um, uncomfortable mind heart state. And, um, and then we left with talking about how it's helpful to trace back to what caused it. So um, some of you were here from last week. I'm wondering how that went for you this week. Yeah, Vicki was here. Marlene, maybe she got booted off and she'll have to, I don't know what happened to her, but she was here last week too. Um, and uh, we talked about, I'm curious if like how it made a difference and you're being just aware, more aware of restlessness and how it um, feeds worry. So we also talked about m worry being sort of the mental experience that we have of restlessness. Um, but today we're going to spend uh, the lion's share of our talk around how to prevent <laughs> restlessness and worry from arising. So um, once we understand this, uh, heart mind state, we can talk about um, uh, like even getting uh, preventing it, 
preventing it from arising. Now it will happen, but it doesn't have to happen as often um, when we have certain practices in place. And that's why I included um, when we started our meditation today, um, opening towards goodness. Okay, so opening towards um, uh, like reminding ourselves of goodness, right? Because if we don't remind ourselves of the goodness, it's, it's always happening, seriously. Like <laughs> there's all these, there's all of these, and it doesn't mean that we should like, you know, um, I, I, it's not a way to bypass challenge. But if we're not opening our heart mind intentionally towards goodness, then likely we're, we're, we're just more prone to collapsing into overwhelm or collapsing into life sucks. This is shitty. This is hard. And yeah, like all that's true. <laughs> all that's true. And, and, you know, if we, if we really want freedom, we get to like practice things that open us to a bigger view, you know, cause yeah, it's challenging and that's not the whole picture. It's far from it. And so we can train our capacity to um, open to the field of goodness. And that's good news for those of us who are kind of like me. I was never, you know, the whole like optimistic, optimistic, pessimistic thing, like whatever. I've always been more on the pessimistic glasses, half empty for sure. The worst will happen, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know, like I, I, and that's okay. The cool thing that the thing that I love about practice is it's not necessarily about really anchoring into any view. It's about being beyond view, which for me is like, was complete freedom, like cool. Um, and part of, you know, kind of being beyond view is opening the view, right. To also include these aspects that we haven't noticed naturally, um, because of our chronic crankiness or whatever our thing is, trauma, developmental trauma definitely will have us catastrophizing. Um, and so, uh, so let's talk about, um, things that we can do to prevent restlessness and worry from arising because they sure are painful. Um, to experience. Um, so simple, but I, I, I got to mention it, you know, is having enough sleep, exercise, and nutrition, like simple stuff, right? But like, we can check those things and go like, okay, am I getting enough sleep? My talking to people, we're getting more sleep with COVID. Yeah, I know I am. Like I wake up a good hour later than I used to, because I just don't have to get the kids out to school like I used to, but, um, but, you know, are we exercising enough? Are we, um, getting good food to eat? So those things really matter when it comes to, um, restlessness and the body's, uh, the body, if the body is like, I know if I drink too much coffee for sure, I will be more restless and my mind will reflect that the mind is always reflecting the state of the heart. If the heart is scared, the mind will reflect thoughts that are fearful. If the heart is loving, the mind will reflect loving thoughts. Like it's the, it's, you can notice this in your sitting practice, how tethered these things are. I can also imagine like you can do right now, something wonderful in my mind. And I can have a flicker of that experience in my heart, right? So that it works both ways. Um, but, but if we don't take care of our bodies and we're feeding it stuff that, um, you know, people are drinking a lot more now, just for example, and I have no judgment around that. Um, and we just get to notice, like have waking up with, you know, a, even the littlest bit of a hangover will impact, you know, how we think and how we feel about the rest of our day. And so just taking these kinds of things into consideration is really important. Another thing is like living ethically. And I say that lightly, but it's quite deep. Living ethically, you know, if, if when we live ethically, we can sleep well at night, right? And, and when we live, and we might say, yeah, you know, I, I live ethically, but, but most of us could improve in this department. Like most of us could probably gossip less. Yeah, I, I, me included. Right. I work on this one pretty, pretty a, a lot, but I could work on this one. You know, most of us could probably work on 
not taking out our stuff on other people. Yeah, most of us could probably get a little better at that. <laughs> right. And, and then there's the, you know, and then, you know, we can think about even just like the precepts in Buddhism, for example, are, um, are really good, like things to visit on a daily basis around living ethically. You know, we talk about abstaining from harmful speech. Powerful, you know, abstaining from um, harm, killing right? Abstaining from um, craving of sensual desire. And that doesn't, I'm not talking about sex here, though. It can mean that. But it's like any time I'm hooking into some thinking that something outside of me is going to fill the hole in the soul, I will suffer. Anytime I use that thing to feel better, right? So because it doesn't actually satisfy over time. So we want to be just like aware. We want to enjoy like pleasurable experience. Like, please enjoy the food, enjoy the fireplace, enjoy the hot coffee, enjoy whatever it is, the, this daylight, like, please take pleasure in living. That's so important. And that's actually part of this. At the same time, don't use it to bring you something it never can right? And we can get caught in that. That's a big one I work with being, you know, an alcoholic. It's like, it doesn't just show up around alcohol, right? Like the tendency to get addicted to stuff outside of me is strong. <laughs> so I have to be like watchful of that and, um, and rem remind myself it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do it. You know, it's like, it's not going to, um, whatever the thing is, the extra whatever, isn't going to fill the ache in me. I think it's useful to just like honor the ache. All of us can take a breath with that right now. Honor the ache. You know, it's called lots of different things. You know, we've called it existential angst or angst. We call it the anxious quiver of being. You know, this, this ache is, is paramount to our growth. Ache sucks. Yeah, it hurts. It can be painful. <laughs> and ache especially sucks when we judge it as not being okay. When we think that we shouldn't have the ache. So just check that out for yourself. Like, have you ever like really gone long without noticing that ache? And how is it when you're fighting the ache as opposed to like letting it cook you, letting it move you, letting it pull you, right? Rumi, I think it was Rumi that said that which is seeking is causing you to seek. That inside that seeks is wholesome and innocent and part of our growth. Right? So we are both being, but we're also becoming. We're on our way. We just don't know where we're going. So like that seeking, that pull, that call of the spirit, this is a spiritual hunger. It can only be satisfied through spiritual, whatever. You don't even have to call it spiritual, but through these, like through practice, through the practice of transcending ego. And that doesn't make ego wrong or bad, but it's like at, at some point, you know, when we're, we, true fulfillment comes when we cease to just be a slave, you know, or, 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 and, or like that wasn't the right word. Um, I'm working with my languaging around. It's so weird how language is like tied to um, so much oppression um, that I don't want to be part of. Um, so anyway, um, that, that like when we're obeying the ego, we are in trouble. When we're letting the ego drive the car of our life, we're in trouble. And it's the ego who thinks that it's these little things externally that will fill the hole. It doesn't. So just look back on your life for evidence of this. <laughs> that ache has been there for as long as you've known yourself to be you. And it's wholesome. It's a wholesome longing. 
So if we can think of it that way, rather than thinking there's something wrong with it, it can really, it can really um, fuel our practice. Um, another thing, so living ethically, uh, was there anything else that I missed on living ethically? I talked about speech, I talked about killing, talked about sensual desire. There's two others that I'm missing, they'll come to me. Um, have confidence in your ability to work through it. This is important. Have confidence, just like these practices don't just work for other people. <laughs> You're not someone who is particularly broken. <laughs> You're not someone who is specially broken, right? Cause we can be as like, um, attached egoically to our sense of being broken as we are to being better than okay they're neither one is like one is not better than the other so remember like have confidence in your capacity to um to be free you know to be free to be happy for no reason right to to like be satisfied and deeply settled and enjoy your life. We, we need to have confidence in that for ourselves. And oftentimes that confidence is one, is one that we remember. It's not one that's just like, we're walking around with it. <laughs> it's a practice. It's practice to remember confidence, not in yourself, right? Not in yourself. Right. That's kind of like a, eh, you know, maybe on a good day, <laughs> have confidence in the practice, have confidence in the practice, right? This inclination of attention towards presence. That's like, that's the simplest way I can put it, right? The inclination of attention towards presence is intentional. What's, what's, unconscious is our inclination of our attention towards what's wrong towards the past towards the future that's easy our practice is about inclining the heart mind in this intentional way towards presence and then we can open up to wholesome you know these wholesome like wholesome goodness like what i talked about in the meditation like we can we can train the mind towards these more like these types of reflections that remind us of something that we've forgotten that has us just feeling better about being alive. Okay. Um, the next thing about, you know, uh, in terms of how to prevent restlessness and worry from arising is conscious breathing. Right now, are you breathing consciously? It's just a good reminder. It's not just for yoga practice, right? It's not just for meditation practice. Conscious breathing is for everyday life practice. Like every moment we can be breathing consciously. And when we breathe consciously and we're more mindful of the breath, well, that takes attention away from, from, from the, um, preoccupations, you know, our thoughts have with what could go wrong with what's wrong right? A lot of our suffering is caused by our attachment to thoughts. Now, if I'm consciously breathing, I'm much less likely to be attached to thoughts, no matter how busy my mind is or how negative my mind tends to be. I can in any moment incline my awareness towards the breath. Just know you can just do it right now. And you don't need anything special, but a reminding a remembering to do it. Right. So whatever reminders you need signs around your house or in front of your computer or, you know, whatever in on your phone. Um, but breathing consciously, uh, if that's all we did, the whole, if, 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 if like all day long today, the whole planet just breathed more consciously, everything would change. Irrevocably. Like it, it, it's, that's how powerful conscious breathing is. Um, simple, like just softening the face, softening inner tensions, softening the stomach, 
softening eye strain. So softening the animal, the body periodically, right? Because what fuels restlessness? T tension. <laughs> I'm tense. I'm not breathing. I'm like, right? And that just feeds more restlessness, more worry. We can re-relax. You know, Thich Nhat Hanh said, um, joy can be the source of your smile, but your smile can also be the source of your joy. When he was invited to speak at, um, I believe it was Spirit Rock, or maybe it was a Zen center, but he was invited to speak at some Buddhist, popular Buddhist center. And, um, and his feedback was like, you guys could smile more. Everyone was so intense and uptight about getting the practice right. And you'll see this, it, it's true. You have to laugh, you know, cause we just take our stuff and we bring it wherever we go. <laughs> and so, you know, we can like, ah, oh, just soften up, soften up soften up. Mm. Uh, another piece that's really, you know, letting go of beliefs that keep them going. Now that sounds, um, you know, it's such a simple way of putting a, a, a really profound practice. Um, letting go of beliefs. How do we do that? Well, there's lots, well, there's lots of different ways my favorite <laughs> is when you notice that you're triggered, if you notice that you're caught, ask yourself, what am I feeling or what am I, what am, what am I believing about myself or about life right now? If you find that you're really worried about something, what am I believing about this thing? Right? What am I believing about me or about life right now? And Real, really helpful to write it down or put it in your phone or say it out loud, whatever is accessible. If you can write it down, it's great. I'm believing something bad is going to happen. I don't even know what it is, but I just have this feeling something bad is going to happen. You know, like these kind of nebulous, you know, amorphous, like belief, like they're, we can't even like, we're not even clear about what they are. They're just lurking there you know, but when we bring a light of awareness to them, we start to question them. Is it true? Just to get more conscious of, oh, this is what I'm believing. I'm bad. I'm wrong. I've done something wrong. You know, simple things like that really can help to unhook us from that, like running the show. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention here is uh, remember that this isn't just for you, right? It isn't just for you. Your happiness is inextricably like woven into that of the collective. But more, more um, specifically, uh, you being a happier human will help the people that you're closest to to be happier humans. Now, whether you live alone or with others, you are making an impact. You are, you're making an impact with every word you speak, with every thought you think, you know? I mean, it really is like important for us to remember our interconnection because if it's just for us, eh, I don't know if that's much of a motivation, it's not for me. I mean, sure, like I wanna feel better, but like I, it's gotta be, when I think about my kids, when I think about my husband, when I think about my students and my clients, and I think about all of the people that I impact on a daily basis, just even walking down the street, when I think about others, you know, it helps me uh, like do it. It helps me practice. It helps me be more mindful. Um, and so, yeah, remembering that it isn't just about you and it isn't just for you. All right, so that's, that's the last point that I had for how to prevent it from arising. I'm just gonna recap briefly. Have enough exercise, sleep, and good nutrition. Live ethically. Have confidence in your capacity to be free. 
not yours, but the practice really have confidence in your capacity. If you practice that you too can be free consciously breathing, not restricting the breath, but breathing through it, softening face, eyes, stomach, letting go of beliefs that keep them going. And remember, it's not just for you. It's not just for you. All right. So just taking all this in, I want to know from you as we come to a close in our talk about restlessness and worry and true confidence, right? It really spoke to true calm. All of this, when we practice it, builds our capacity to just have faith. And true confidence is this faith. You know, I don't have to hold so tightly. I can do the work and it will bear fruit. Right, true, true confidence in our capacity to be free. We really want to hold that vision for ourselves. Um, what was most potent for you? I'd love to hear in the chat, like just pop into the chat, like what, what spoke to you? What's an aha for you? It's like so much colder this week here in California than it was last week, isn't it? Oh, or it's like even Vicky's shaking her head. I don't know how it is for you over there, Joanne, but woo, I feel like, yeah, it dropped like 10 degrees. Got my slippers on, <laughs> got my scarf on. Field of goodness. Thanks, Carrie. It's nice to have you here. Yeah, the field of goodness. Um, yeah, it is, right? Yeah, nippy hair, Joanne. Cold and rainy, heaters on and sweater is okay in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Takeaways, field of goodness. I have to say, <laughs> I did piggyback off of Jack Cornfield with that one. I did a sit with him last night and uh, and he was he was guiding us into the field of goodness. And I knew it would support what we were talking about today. So um, true confidence in my ability to be free. I have been doubting that a bit over here yeah good good marlene aaron the mind is a reflection of what's going on in the heart yeah yeah aaron i've been recently reconnecting with old friends over zoom but it's been a bit difficult accepting how much we've changed and how some of them have gone down paths that are difficult for me to understand yeah maybe let go of the fact that i think i have the right idea or i'm doing the right thing yeah here in parham there's a necessary grief that's happening here too as you sense the, the shift. So, you know, there might be some grief here that you don't, you don't need to fight. I just want to mention that. Um, I love Jack Hornfield talks. Yeah. Restlessness equals a friend on the path. Yeah. Good. Um, remembering to soften where we hold tension. Beautiful. So take this with you today and may you be free from worry and from restlessness today, more free. That doesn't mean they don't arise. <laughs> Freedom doesn't mean it's gone. Freedom just means it doesn't have a hold on me anymore. Okay, so may you be, and as you might look around the group here at all the beings that gathered, that, that co-created this virtual Sangha, we'll be back next week, Tuesday. And may you be at ease, may you be at peace, may you be filled with loving kindness, may you be free. And if you want to take yourself off mute, you can and say goodbye. Bye. Have a great day. See you later. Bye. Come back on next next week.